Hey scrapbookers, I'm Trisha from Club Scrap and welcome to the Hops and Barley Remix Page Kit Workshop. That's a mouthful. Hope you've poured yourself a cold one and that you're ready to have some fun. I always like to say um, cuts and then cocktails. So however you would choose to approach this, just make sure your papers are safe from liquid beverages. I've got my instructions here, my uh, Hops and Barley Remix, and I just wanted to remind you to make sure that you're working with the same kit I am. This was released in 2023, the Hops and Barley Remix. So just make sure what I'm working with matches what you have. If not, dig a little deeper into our special release instructions. So I'll set aside all of the embellishments as I usually do. Let's isolate those papers and put them upright for sorting. Let's get those papers into the correct order for our trimming purposes. So I'm going to start out with, um, in my stack anyway, it's the third sheet. It should be near the top. It's the ale print. It just says brown ale right here on the left side. It has that banner. And I'm going to put that face down on my trimmer base, followed by this beautiful stripe print, just one of those face down. And then next, I want you to find two sheets of that deep, deep brown color. This is a nice, really heavy stock. You'll love that. So both of those, two sheets of brown. Then we're gonna go with the light yellow. And the only way to compare, to make sure you have the right colors to know what all the yellows look like, there is a paper in here we're calling that one gold. And this is the light yellow and dark yellow. You can see pretty clearly. So just grab one light yellow. Paper so heavy. Mm -mm -mm. Then one gold, that's this color. A white linen that's pretty easy to identify and I'm going to use this uh, so that the linen side is facing down just just because uh, next find one dark yellow reach for your sheet of cut aparts now I want the one that says you can't buy happiness but you can buy beer and that's kind of the same thing so that'll go face down and then someone keeps putting vegetables in the beer crisper <laughs> that'll be the next one now let's find the remaining stripe print. I'll put that face down with a gold. This should be that, this should be your last gold. Then two light yellow, two of the remaining dark yellow, then your white linen, and finally your last brown ale face down. And let's pick up that whole stack and flip it back over to where we started with the brown ale print. At this point, I'm going to grab my accordion pocket file. This is going to keep us organized by placing everything into one of four pockets. If you don't have this, make sure you isolate four piles. This is just a great way to utilize our space. We have lots of vertical space going up to the ceiling, not nearly as much spreading outward. So this is our, my little solution to that. If you need to get set up with an accordion pocket file, reach out to us at Club Scrap. We'll help you make that happen. Okay, going with the trimming now, I have the brown ale print. Um, unlock and lift the blade of your trimmer. So there's that little notch there where it keeps it locked. Lift that blade all the way up and let's find five and a quarter inches here. And my print as noted here is right side up. So to find five and a quarter, make sure you're looking not at the centimeters here, but at inches, find five and a quarter. Now these columns, each one represents a quarter inch. So I'm gonna go left to find five and a quarter. Now stabilize by pushing down firmly on this bar and give it a slice and you just isolated your little recipe here. And both of these pieces incidentally are used in layouts five and six. So I will place these in the pocket labeled five and six at an angle so that I can still see that number here on the left side of the pocket. Okay, now I'm gonna place the stripe print in the trimmer here. Now I'm, take note that the largest hops uh, greenery is in the lower left. It's more bright yellow working its way to brown. So that's the orientation for our trimming. It doesn't matter too, too much. Um, but we'll start out here at eight and a quarter. So again, finding eight, go left one column for eight and a quarter, stabilize, and then slide to four and a quarter. So you're practicing your quarters. <laughs> All right, now this piece here, pocket three and four, Take the chunk from the middle, this is a four by 12, and we'll cut this at six. Just cutting it right in half. And then these two pieces we'll place in pocket one and two. And finally, this last strip, pocket three and four, nice and easy. 
Turning to page two now of our instructions, we'll grab one sheet of the brown. So you should have one on your two trim pile and one in your trimmer base. Let's begin here at nine and a half. So again, that's halfway between nine and 10. Now let's just make sure you go the right direction to create that measurement, nine and a half. And then six and a quarter. If you're new to measuring, um, I, I can seem really fast and overwhelming, but I just want to encourage you, hang in there. You will eventually get a rhythm right along with me and this process will be so much easier. Okay, now I'm rotating that six and a quarter by 12 we just created. And let's cut at eight and a half. And four and a quarter. You can always slow the pace down just by adjusting your playback speed. That'll really slow me down. All right, these two pieces here, pocket three and four. And then you have this, this rectangle that fell from the end here. We're gonna cut that horizontally at six and three. And you made two pieces that are the same, pocket three and four. And we did create a small scrap. We have about six scraps, I think, in total, and they're all about this size. Next, let's take the strip to the right of the blade. And this one is three and a quarter by 12 right now. We'll cut out 11. Eight and a quarter, five and a half. Notice I'm still using a finger to stabilize, and two and three quarters. I'm going to stack up the four pieces that are the same. Those are going to go in pocket three and four, and then there is a scrap that fell from the end. We'll set that aside. And our final strip here, let's trim this one at nine and a half. Seven and four and a quarter. Place this rectangle in pocket three and four. Then you have a piece that's not quite square. That goes in one and two. Finally, you have two squares for pocket five and six. And this next trimming adventure with the other brown is going to give us a lot of really narrow strips. I use those quite a bit because it's such a nice deep color. It was perfect for anchoring some border strips and stuff. So bear with me. We'll start out at 11 and 3 quarters. That's going to be really close to the 12, right? Then 11 and a half. 11 and a quarter. 11, keep going, 10 and 3 quarters, now go with me to 10 and 1 quarter, 10 and a quarter, 8 and 3 quarters, so go down a little further this time, 7 and a half, and 6 and a quarter, Whew, that was a lot of little cuts there. Rotate, we're gonna do this a lot today. We're gonna to create our photo mats like this. So let's just trim at eight and a half and four and a quarter. That gives us two more photo mats, okay? So these are gonna go in pocket five and six. And then the rectangle, again, we'll trim just like we did before at six and three. Well, again, we'll do that a lot today. And both of these uh, rectangles go in pocket five and six again. Plus there is that little tiny scrap that we won't use that came off the end. I'm gonna pick up the entire remaining pile of all these strips. The two on the top are the same width. Those go in pocket five and six. Then the next slightly wider piece, that's gonna go in one and two. Remember I'm filing that at an angle. Now there's like, there's a bunch of really little ones plus this slightly larger one. So take the larger one, plus two skinnies. They're all pretty skinny, but all three of these pieces, the one large and the two smaller, they all go in pocket seven and eight. Then one of them, pocket five and six, and the last two in pocket one and two. All right, that's it for those brown uh, pieces. Now we're at the light yellow, so we're gonna do something really simple. It's a review, okay? So we start out at six and a quarter again rotate and cut at eight and a half and four and a quarter. I told you we'd be doing a lot of this. <laughs> These two pieces, pocket three and four, the rectangle that fell off the end, we're going to do the same thing again. So we'll cut at six and three. 
gather the two little rectangles, pocket three and four. Once again, tiny little scrap. And this large piece, as is, gets placed in pocket seven and eight. Next up is one sheet of gold. We'll trim at 10 and a quarter. And six and a quarter. Rotate. Cut at, you're not going to believe this, eight and a half. <laughs> and four and a quarter. Lots of review. Both of these pieces, pocket one and two. And the rectangle, guess what? We're going to trim at six and three. These smaller mats give a nice supporting balance to the larger mats. These both go in pockets seven and eight. And once again, a small scrap gets set aside. This four by 12 will just trim in half at six. And both of those rectangles, pocket one and two. And this last long strip, pocket one and two. Again, I'm clipping along here at pretty good pace. I just press pause as much as needed. Consult your instruction document if you like. Rewind if you need to. We're moving on to the white linen. This is the top of page three of our instructions if you're following. We'll trim this at 11 and three quarters. And that good old six and a quarter. And believe it or not, we're gonna rotate and cut at eight and a half. And four and a quarter, shocker. These two photo mats go in pocket one and two. And a warning, we're not gonna do a repeat. We're gonna do something a little different here. Let's trim this horizontally at four and a quarter and place this in pocket one and two. Now these, this guy, we're gonna actually trim this horizontally at one and three quarters. And this is where I like this clear bar here. I can safely support this with my fingertip and trim at one and three quarters and Use that other piece to shove it out a little bit. And then you have two rectangles the same size, pocket three and four. Now we have this larger piece remaining. We'll trim horizontally at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. That gives me three rectangles that are the same for pocket seven and eight. And then you have this narrow strip here also going in pocket seven and eight. Getting down to it. Now we're at the, at the oh, there was, a, I'm sorry, there was a little scrap, kind of a big scrap, but it's a scrap nonetheless. All right, here we go. We're gonna cut this dark yellow at eight and a quarter and four. Now rotate the four inch piece. We'll cut at six and both of these pieces go in pockets seven and eight. The next strip, this is four and a quarter by 12, we're also gonna cut this at six. This is gonna go in pocket five and six. And then you have one more strip. This is currently three and three quarter by 12. We'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, and three and three quarters. Gathering up these three squares, they all go in pocket five and six, and this little piece, seven and eight. Here we are at our cut aparts. So I love these because they just make finishing my pages super easy. So do you see the, the little hash marks in the corners? I'm gonna line up that hash mark with the outside edge of that stainless steel blade on my trimmer, and maybe just go a little shy of the hash mark for this first cut. So I still have a little bit of it left. I'm gonna clean that up on my fourth rotation here. So now I'm gonna rotate the paper and this time, because I've made that starter cut, I can see much better to align that guide with the blade. And then I'll rotate and then remove it from this edge. And that way we get a really nice 12 by 12 to work with here. Get this one. And that last little cut, to, I'm going to go here, look at the 12 inch mark and give it a little shaving, which is exactly what I got. It's so little that it's curled. <laughs> I love that my trimmer is capable of making a cut like that, even though it's such a inexpensive little workhorse here. All right, so to begin, now I want to make sure those little bullseyes, those little circles are on the right edge before we cut at 11. 
and then nine and three quarters, seven and three quarters, five and three quarters, and three and a half. I was just make sure you're never going to cut through artwork. That's to be avoided. All right, this larger piece here is going to go in seven and eight. And then pick up just the next piece. You're going to cut horizontally. Make sure beer equals salad is on your right. First cut here is nine and three quarters, seven and a half, and four. This piece goes in pocket three and four. If you happen to have a one inch circle punch, I love the way Jacqueline just thinks it through here. She literally lines this up close enough to the edge where you're actually able to get your punch all the way around the image without having to trim anything away. So thoughtful, right? Okay, that's done. This is garbage here. Uh, let's see, the two bullseyes, those both go in pocket five and six. Then you have the, the lager, seven and eight, and the one labeled beer, that goes in one and two. And those of course coincide with your bottle caps. Now you can pick up the remaining strips, keeping them in the order they landed. This top one here goes in seven and eight. The next one, just like it, pocket one and two. And dog beers, I've only had one, that's pocket one and two. And then this bullseye strip here, five and six. It's not really a bullseye, but it just kind of reminds me of one. <laughs> okay, we did the same little treatment here. So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and take off that little end cut from all four edges of this, just so that we, again, can start out with a really nice, clean 12 by 12. I found that if I have the manufacturer make that last cut, it's never absolutely 100% of the time accurate. Um, so I, that kind of throws the whole thing off and this was my solution that I felt, you know, really made it all possible. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of all those little scraps and make sure that the strip with the circles is on the right before we begin trimming once again at 11, seven and three quarters. and four. Now rotate, make sure that beer doesn't ask questions. That should be on your right. And we'll trim at nine and a quarter and six. This goes in pocket three and four, as does this other image. And then beer doesn't ask silly questions, one and two. Here, make sure that little banner is on your right and we'll cut at 11 and a quarter, seven and a half, three and three quarters. Pocket one and two, pocket five and six, and this little stout one, that's seven and eight, and the little banner, also seven and eight. Next up, we've got our little bone shaped, so that'll be on the right. We'll cut at nine and three quarters, seven and a half, and four. This goes in pocket one and two. Also, this larger journaling prompt, one and two. The horizontal prompt, seven and eight. And the vertical line, or the vertical prompt with the lines, that's five and six. And your little circle strip, five and six. I think I forgot these guys. I'm sorry. You're probably thinking, Trisha, where do those go? <laughs> if I was in a live class, rest assured, we wouldn't have gotten nearly this far without those files. <laughs> there would have been hands shooting up everywhere. All right, so the beer, both of these together, these little squares go in pocket five and six. And if there's ever any question or doubt, or if you've fallen behind, you can always consult the, the diagrams here. And then that shows you the image and tells you exactly what, what pocket. Uh, all the pieces are supposed to go in. At this point, I want you to turn 
to uh, page five, the last page of your instructions, because we're finished trimming. And we're gonna work our way backwards uh, as we assemble. I'm gonna call this the dry fit phase, meaning we won't be using adhesive. We're just going to place the pieces where, you know, kind of in their proximity, <laughs> where they're supposed to go. Make sure everything's accounted for. And then on your own time, you can assemble the pages. While we do this, I will give you some assembly tips that you can consult. And I always mark the chapters of the video so that you can see like, all right, I have a question about five and six. You'll be able to click directly over to that chapter in the YouTube video to get your question answered. Okay, so get rid of the trimmer here, making sure I support this pocket while I set the trimmer aside. I'll lay this on its back. And we of course have this stack of papers that's left over. We need to figure out what we're gonna do with this. So take the whole stack, pull off the top sheet and move it to your right. That way we've got our spread. Here we got the base for page seven and the base for page eight right in front of us. And you can see that by looking at the picture labeled seven and eight. That's what we're gonna put together here. So if I empty the pocket labeled seven and eight, ideally everything required except for the you know embellishments is gonna be in this pocket. And I didn't really pay attention with any particular order, um, but I do like to distribute all of these items from my hand if possible rather than one at a time from the tabletop it's just go it goes a little faster so um, whatever you're comfortable with you know have at it right away this larger yellow sheet i'm going to place just down at the bottom edge i know i'm covering up a big portion of this print and i apologize <laughs> then we have this other border this is going to go down here a way to, to know where it gets placed would be to put these down first so as you're adhering this later on I would, I would glue these in place first, and then this is gonna frame it right beneath. Then you'll have a thin strip. Do you see how I'm kind of creating a box around those two pieces? Then we have our large mat, our large strip here, and then flank that on the other side with this. I have to give you a little correction. However, I did add a piece of this cute little plaid ribbon. Let me grab my scissors. I'll cut a length of that. So this goes down a little and the ribbon goes above, just above that. And then these pieces will of course go on top of the ribbon or you could run it through whatever your little heart desires. Okay. So just so you know, that's how that ribbon is used. And let's see, on the other side, I'm going to, just above the yellow, I'm going to nest this wider brown that can go with that um, quarter inch white linen strip. Now below this, in that yellow, this really kind of sets it off nice. We've got a row, and I call this film strip placement, just three in a row, like a little film strip. Maybe that's too old fashioned for some of our viewers now, I don't know. <laughs> and then two vertical gold, Oh, I did put this banner, I cut it out and didn't trim it very accurately, just around the edges there. And I'll show you what I mean on the uh, on my finished sample. It's gonna go right there. The journaling prompt here, I'm gonna place that kind of in that area. And now we have our object that's round and that is designed to be trimmed. You can do this with a die cutting machine and a thin metal die if you have one or otherwise you can just rough cut it with scissors and that's going to fit right on top of the coaster perfectly and I did add some ribbon coming out of the sides there now for this yellow I trim and I like doing this because it just kind of it's a great way to use up a little scrap I turn it into something special instead of throwing it away so I cut a little triangle from the short edge here a v-shaped cut and then you can do the same thing with some of this ribbon. So I'm going to fold it in half the long way, like this way, and cut at an angle toward the fold. And that puts a little V in there. And then you can nest this about the same length. And this becomes a really cute little embellishment. You can adhere the ribbon to the paper and then it, it can tuck underneath here to give it a little balance and also carry the plaid from the left side of the page over to the right. 
Lastly, you have this little logger, and in your goodie pack, you have uh, these flattened bottle gap caps. It's, it's fun to put these together, and you know, when I did mine, I just did them all at the same time rather than one page at a time. So I'm shoving this logger down into that adorable <laughs> little flattened bottle cap. If you want, you can use a bone folder to really push it down or maybe the tip of a stylus. And then I'm gonna take my glue and just go around the perimeter. This is my, my insurance policy. A little bit of that glue there. You may have to peel off a top protectant from the epoxy sticker sheet. I've already done that. And then just put the sticker down on there and that's gonna dry perfectly clear. And that will be placed down over here by your journaling prompt. Cute, isn't that? Just, mm, I love that embellishment. It's so easy, quick, and effective, right? So let's look at the finished product here. We've got my die cut um, element. And again, just trim with scissors if you don't have the equipment. I know a lot of you already have like a Sizzix or some sort of a die cutting machine. And then I just made lip, loops of ribbon here, wrapping around before I glued this on. I used earth ink, now I'm remembering, to edge those coasters with a sponge. Um, again, that's optional as well. And here's my little ribbon trick here. Everything else is pretty straightforward. Then on this page, I uh, have my, my ribbon going across that background. There's my little uh, flattened bottle cap. You can see I trimmed this, but not with any great attention to detail. It only took me about less than a minute. A quick tip, when you're adding these thin strips, what I'd like to do is add the largest piece first, and then I take the tip of my uh, glue uh, needle tip applicator and run it just along the edge of this larger piece. So that way it just guides as I dispense glue. Then I bring this to the page that already has the glue on it. I prefer that over putting glue on the thin strip and bringing it to the page. I want the glue on the page, bring the strip to the glue. I hope that makes sense. And oh, I also did a fussy cutting on a lot of these little pieces. That's purely optional. I just think it gives it some nice, I don't know, nice finishing touch. So that is layout seven and eight. Now what I'm gonna do and what you can do as well, you don't have to glue all this down right now. You can just do it all later. I'm gonna pick up the base of page seven, slide it over and then pick up the base pick up page six that gives me two light yellow and that matches my image in the instructions and then I'm going to pull everything out of pocket five and six don't forget your little guys okay once again I usually distribute the larger pieces so I'm going to go with the recipe will be on the right it started out on the left side of that print so I like to kind of create some variety. And I'm just going to tip this on its side. I know there's a lot of graphics here. We're honestly not going to see a lot of that. Um, we have some larger yellow uh, photo mats here. And in between this, I'm going to do a little separation here with this brown strip. It just adds so much. Once again, add this first, run a bead line of glue, bring the strip to the glue with a brown border strip kind of splitting the difference of this remaining space and nest it with the border strip from the color parts. And you're gonna find two smaller rectangular mats in the brown. There we go. And then two square mats, boom, and boom. So these are gonna perfectly fit, if, if everything went well. <laughs> um, beer is made from hops, hops are plants, beer equals salad, you're welcome. It's gonna go there. And um, then you also have your flattened bottle cap along with one of these guys. I'm just gonna place it next to it. And I'm also gonna be attaching the um, bottle opener charm. And I'm using a combination of jute and bookbinding glue, and you will see how I did that in a moment. It's absolutely adorable. Okay, then vertically here, I'm gonna add my two brown, and then we're gonna separate this out with just the strip nested. I trimmed this out for the detail. It's gonna go here, and you've got your three mats fit within this opening to perfection, right? Trim this into a circle with scissors or a die cut, and that's gonna go here. And what I what I did with this brown ribbon is I made, I made a loop, kind of like an awareness loop, 
and I made it so the tails, it's quite, it uses quite a bit of ribbon here, but the tails need to extend past the, the bottom and then the loop needs to extend past the top. And I'm just gonna trim that. And once this is trimmed, you can nest it on there. It's gonna look really cool, okay? On the left, once again, you have your remaining bottle cap and then this guy. So I'm just gonna put that next to it again because I already showed you how those go together. And let's talk through the finishing touches. I love this. So I just looped, like I measured a double length of jute that went all the way around to the past the top edge of the page. And then I just did the little luggage loop. I think you know what I mean. You just bring the loop through the hole and then bring the tails through the loop and then it's strung on there, right? Then I just added the jute, wrapped it around to the back and taped it to secure it. And then I used a book binding glue to secure this to my page. I think that's adorable. And it's right next to the flat bottle cap, which is even cuter. This I just attached with, our, with my ATG adhesive two-way tape here, that worked fine. I added these with foam adhesive circles to give it a little bit of pop because there were just quite a few layers of paper underneath. I had, this is like a hundred pound cover weight plus this. So I just popped it up a little bit. On the facing page, you can see my uh, awareness loop here or the badge or the first prize, you know, it could be anything. And then I added some uh, earth ink to the edges of these and um, my fussy cut journaling prompt with the bottle cap there. Fun stuff. All right, cheers. Let's move on to the next uh, page. So I'm going to slide that light yellow base over. And then just one more dark yellow. And now I've got the base for layouts three and four. We're clipping right along here. And get everything out of the pocket labeled three and four. Oh, and I have to turn back one page in my instructions three and four right here. I think I'll begin on the right edge with a series of four smaller rectangles. One, two, three, four. And again, I call that the film strip style. And I'm gonna flank that with the, let's see, I think it's, um, I think it's the narrower version. I have a place like this. Totally up to you though. And it's of really no consequence. <laughs> Um, and then I'm going to do a vertical mat here, vertical mat here. This one you can nest with this fun quote. Now, now word about that. If you have a lot of pictures from your event and you want to use the pictures, pictures come first. You, you can cover that right with a picture. If you prefer two horizontal light yellow mats into the corner here, get your spacing all figured out, get two little a tilted brown here, and then to the little white. Now you don't have to add, you can just put little notes or a tiny little picture of a can of beer, whatever you want in that spot. This piece nests and you can position it however you wish. I have regret, I feel like now mine is on the page upside down, so, but I kind of liked the white space, oh, long story. This I fussy cut and I placed it onto a coaster, added some ribbon after trimming it with my slot punch, and that kind of lays over in this spot with two vertical yellow beneath it. So I have some little mini horizontals, mini verticals, some featured photos, and all of the embellishments. Let's see, the little mini beer bottle charm. <laughs> I believe Jacqueline designed it this way. It fits to a T right there. Isn't that thoughtful of her? <laughs> okay, so here we have my slot punched tag and let me show you my slot the punch if you don't have this we still carry these they've been very popular i think almost everyone has one now it's just a great way to turn a tag or you know a cut apart into a full-fledged tag with a really nice slot uh, through which you can thread your ribbon and it just it adds so much here i did a triple wrap with the jute tied a bow nice and simple over on this side, I made a small loop of the ribbon, again, to carry that through from the other side. Added a little bow to the top of the beer bottle to just bring the eye to it because it's really sweet. Everything else is very straightforward on those. So let's take the base of layout of page three and pick it up and slide it on top of four. Now remove just the white linen over. 
And that gives us the base for one and two. Our final layout here together. And let's take everything out. And this is now empty. Yay us. Hopefully this will use up all the remaining pieces. Maybe we'll start on the right edge again. I think it's gonna be with one of these guys. That's pretty close to the edge. I think I've got it like a quarter of an inch there. I just made these pages uh, yesterday afternoon, so it's pretty fresh in my mind. Sometimes I don't have, I have more time between when I complete the pages and instructions and film, but I got a lot of things on my plate, so I'm just trying to clear it off one thing at a time here. Now I have two gold mats that are gonna sit vertically, and I have to be careful because I have four mats in the kit. The larger ones go on the right and those get matted or nested with the prints. Totally optional thing you could do there. And then you have this other white linen. Okay, you got the white linen mat here. And this would probably be the order I would adhere things down for the most part for this side. Then nest it with the gold, right? Then you've got this gold strip a brown strip, so we're double matting this title. In dog beers, I've only had one. Okay, above that now, I'm gonna add this, but before you adhere it, I'm gonna give you a little trick in a minute. Vertical on that, and that should nest perfectly with drink good beer with good friends. And uh, of course this becomes round and goes on the remaining coaster over here. Um, we've got, I trimmed this out and I trimmed this and added my remaining bottle cap with the word beer. And then this fits kind of tucks in there too. Okay, so that's the uh, ingredients all used up. Oh, and we have this fun, uh, tab. I, I bet some of you don't even remember when beer tabs look like this. I do. And I grew up in the 70s and 80s and I remember. It's going to go in this spot and then this is going to hang down from the sentiment here. I had so much fun adding these embellishments to the pages. Let's take a look. Slot punch went right through the coaster this time and just swung some ribbon around to the back to just anchor that a little. Here um, I ran the plaid ribbon around the journaling prompt, which I trimmed, and then nested my little bottle cap there. Check this out. I strung the bottle cap, the mini bottle cap, onto some of that jute and literally just tied it and, and hung it from the sentiment, which I think is really fun there. Okay, and over on this side now, here's the beer tap. I first strung it with ribbon. Then I glued it, so I used bookbinding glue, and that's really well secured to the page. That's what I love about our bookbinding glue, is awesome for putting metal objects on paper and having it be secure. Then I taped this around at the back. That was honestly the very, very last thing I did in the making of all these pages, was I, put, I glued this in place and then set it aside out of the way. Now check this out. This is probably one of my favorite little tricks. So if you look here on my prepared page, once I knew I had this placed and this glued on, okay? Once I knew where this was gonna go, I took a pencil and I marked where this mat ended in relation to that little banner. So right here and right here, okay? Do you see this is the banner, this is the mat, and that's where it meets. Then I took my cutting mat and a craft knife. And I went from where that pencil mark is and I cut carefully along the banner with my knife and made a slit. Then I could take my nested mat and run it under that slit so that the banner stays in the foreground. And you can see right here, I've got it taped on the back. So this is the photo mat going behind in the slit that I cut with my craft knife. Now, do you have to do this? No. Is it a cool trick? Yes. If you don't feel comfortable with using a craft knife, no problem. Just skip it and just lay it right on top of there. It's a fun little trick. If you like doing stuff like that, great. If not, don't worry about it. If you don't have time, if you're just really trying to crank out a book and you have no time, then skip it, okay? So I'm gonna slide this on top of here 
And now my pages are ready and I'm gonna pile all this on. And let's see, from all of that, all that work and all those pages with all of those materials, these were our scraps. I don't even think we can count this, right? Not bad for the scraps from eight pages. <laughs> Let's just say you want to load all of this back into the bag as you're gonna bring it to the next crop you attend so that you can impress all your friends with everything you will accomplish. You just bring this. You know every page is gonna be embellished and finishable, okay? So you show up at your crop and instead of bringing 27 loads from the car, you bring all of your prepped layouts from a year's time or whatever, six months worth or whatever, with you. And that's gonna take about that much space. And then you bring a big brick of pictures, adhesive tape, foam adhesive, you know, scissors, just really, really basic materials. And um, you're gonna be the most productive person in the building. To reload this into the, the bag that it has the sticky flap, I'm gonna give you a trick. I'm gonna stick my flap, which is at the top, right? Flap is at the top, sticky side facing the table. Stick the flap to the table at the midpoint. Flip, so I call this the stick and flip. Flip the bag open, and now the table holds the bag open for you during the reload. I'm just gonna slide all that in there. And now those pages are ready to complete at my very next event or free moment, or you can just sit and do this maybe in front of the TV while you're watching your favorite show with your favorite person. And I'm gonna put the instructions uh, right in the top so I know what I'm looking at here. And my hops and barley pages are ready to go. I hope you enjoyed the class and the process. I love this process so much. Um, I really enjoy creating these layouts for you and and even the instructions and, and even the videos. So um, sometimes I, when I'm filming, I know I'm alone, but I'm just thinking about all of you and wanting you to be successful. It's my hope that you feel that way every time you do one of our kits. If you're not already a member of Club Scrap, consider joining, you'll save money and you'll get that treat to yourself in the mail every month. And um, members always save as well. So um, also just make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit like, uh, give me a little shout out if you're in the mood. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, thanks again for joining me. I'll see you next time.